I've read a lot of material over the years in Israel, and I've come across um, a lot of statements, and I remember one in particular where it says that you could tell when the people are sick when they no longer recognize the disease, okay, which means that it's like we have glasses on our faces, like me. As y'all see, I got these glasses on, right? I take these glasses off, I take them off, and I know that something's wrong with my vision because I know what clear vision is when I put them on. But had I never seen, had I never had the opportunity to have corrective lenses, as they call them, I would never know what true vision is. Okay, so I would think that my bad vision is good vision. It is only until I get some glasses. They call them corrective lenses for a reason, to correct your vision, because your vision is not correct. But you, you can't tell me that it ain't correct if I've never seen nothing. I'll be like, no, nah, man, my vision is fine. Do you understand? Then there's somebody tie me up, throw some glasses on me. Bye -bye, boom. I said, damn, where'd you come from? Say, I was always here. Huh? <laughs> then you realize you wasn't seeing at all. Right? So that's how it is when we come into this truth. We don't recognize that we were really in the land of of we were in a world of spiritual turmoil, but never really knew it. However, there was always a spirit in the back of our minds that said something just quite ain't right. And that little voice that was in the back of your mind is what drove you here. All right. They made a lot of movies on it. They called it The Matrix. That's what they were talking about. They said it's the question that drives everybody crazy, right? That's trying to find out what's the deep mystery, trying to find out what is The Matrix, as they say. You know, we are living in the matrix, all of us. We are living in the matrix, meaning the world of Babylon. I'm going to just point out what it really is talking about. In the world of Babylon, where our, where our thinking has been manipulated into thinking that the world that we lived in is normal. And that's the reason why the educational system was so capsuled, if you will, was so surrounded and protected and shielded where you really got no knowledge of what's on the outside of that. Therefore, you thought that everything that was inside your box is correct. It is only until you was to step out of that box to see the condition of what you was like when you was in that box. Y'all understand? All right. I want to start off by saying we had a great day at camp. All praise to the Most High. Give the Lord a hand for that. I also want to, and I'm going to bounce back to the camp situation, I also want to uh, give uh, all praise to the Most High for allowing us to come together. And for, I understand that we have some new visitors today. I, I don't want to, I, I know we'll usually speak like near the end, but how many do we have that are new today? New sister? I can't really see. It was more than one, right? Who else is new? Any new brothers? Stick your hand up high so I can say, I'm not going to call on you right now for nothing. Uh, you, you knew my brother standing up? What, the 1895? Uh, was he new? You knew? Okay. And who else? Nobody else? Didn't you say there was somebody else that was new? Huh? Oh, they're supposed to show. Okay. Um, the reason why I wanted to bring out the point about the new brothers and sisters is because it is important for our people, especially when they're new, to see how we deal with each other. So when we send our prayers up and we salute each other, then we salute our women and our women salute us back. That is an act of respect. That's an act of nobility because that's something that we are not trained to do, if you will. We have not been, I don't like to use the word trained. We're not, we have not been educated um, to honor our women. We have not been educated in our women honoring us. We have not been educated in learning how to love each other as we would love ourselves, although it's in the Bible, although it's in churches, as they say, but we don't really do it. You know, we would leave the church and go back home and call each other all kinds of MFs and, and Bs and everything else. That ain't what the Most High is about. Y'all all right? So we try to instill a level of, of respectable discipline among our brothers and sisters when we come together. And we, and we try to lead by action. So one of the things that I wanted to say in, in regards to that is that n there's nothing that we do here that is just out of whim. Everything that we do has a meaning. 
Everything that we do has a purpose. It is designed to foster something in your mind to make you even to make you at least question why do they do that? And maybe you'll think about the reasons behind it. You say, oh, okay, I see they, they have a, a certain level of respect towards the women and the women towards the men, children, and so forth. These, just these very little actions can go a long way if you uh, accept them. Um, in terms of camp, we went out to a uh, camp that was uh, uh, all praise to the Most High. The Most High saw fit that, uh, that we hit the streets again, and I give all glory to the Most High for that. And the Lord was definitely with us today. Um, as we went out to camp, we went to, we went to two different spots. We went to a spot that was where they were having the, some kind of parade, one of these college homecoming events. Um, they've been doing that ever since the days I was in college. They always have these homecoming and the, our people just dress all kinds of wild, you know. Um, and, uh, e and even in that spot, there was a couple of, uh, brothers and sisters that, came by and got enlightened a little bit and uh but we noticed that um the, the traffic pretty much sent people a different way but then we began to think and said well where's some of the where are the places where our people at because i understood that around that college area it's like pretty much esau and stuff like that so that's not really where the most high uh give me hold it give, let's get scriptures give me who's reading huh Give me Matthew 10, 5, and 6. Listen to this. This is what we got to do. Matthew 10, 5, and 6. The name of this class is called Believers and Non-Believers, by the way. And I'm just going to get into uh, a little bit of what these things mean. And, and uh, as the class goes on, when the bishop comes on, we'll go right to that. Um, so you got it. Matthew 10, 5, and 6. This is yes, the sir. reason. Now, this is in reference to where and how we teach. Come on. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't go into the ways of the Gentiles. Now, that's a lot of breakdown in, into that. Go ahead. And unto any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Read. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's the verse I want to focus on. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel is whenever we go to teach this gospel, that's what we're supposed to be looking for. It was amazing that when we went out to, uh, I don't know the name of the area. What's, what's the name of the area that we went? Is that, what is it called? Yeah, the second place. Colonier Apartments. Okay. How many of y'all know about that area? Okay, that was my first time there, and uh, and one of the first things I noticed is that there's cameras everywhere. I mean, cameras, <laughs> I ain't never seen so many cameras in one area. Every 10 feet, there was like cameras on top of cameras. Like, what the hell is this? You know, so, um, but that doesn't scare me. You know, I, I mean, you know, that's what it is. But as we went inside, and I see that there's curfews on the yeah, curfew signs set up and so forth. But as we went inside, we began to, you know, I said, well, let's go all in there and let's see what's behind in the back and everything else. And when we got to actually dealing with some of the brothers and the sisters, we learned that a lot of times nobody really visits these people. So what the hell is this? You know, I, I, and I mean, and the reason why, because we spoke to somebody, I ain't going to call his name. Uh, we spoke to a brother, uh, pretty known in the area, and he said nobody really comes back here and really deals with us like this. You know, he said there were some some Edomites that came in, white folks. They come in and with their Caesar Bozier, but they said, man, listen, run this dude out of here. They ran his behind out, chase him out, you know. So, and I said, well, that's all oh, praise the Lord for that. Yeah. You know, some <laughs> they said they have better sense than most people. Get this man out. So, anyway, when we came there, you know, and I could see, you know, you walk into an area, you'd see how people be like, okay, who the hell are these guys? And they watch you from a distance and all that. So, you know, you got to be cool as you do your business. But one of the main things that I wanted to say in regards to that is that whenever we are dealing with our people, we got to be real with the people. Okay? At some point, we're going to be going into the prisons and be talking to our brothers and sisters in the prisons. And that's the reason why I talk about the, uh, 
the importance of making sure that our house itself, I'm talking about like in here, congregational wise, we have to make sure that in here is on point. Because if we're trying to tell our people to come out of the wicked lifestyles that they're in, when they come in here, they have to see righteousness. They have to see a proper example. They have to see, they have to be able to say within themselves, okay, I see why these brothers and sisters carry themselves the way they do because it's right here in their home base. You understand? So it's important for us. That's the reason why I always talk about spiritual discipline. That's the reason why I always talk about uh, uh, examining our own spirits to make sure that we are reflective of what we teach. It's one thing to talk and preach about something, but we have to live what we teach. We have to be an example of what we teach. So the example of what we teach will be shown here when our brothers finally come in as a result of us fishing for them, like the scripture said, be fishers of men. We're fishing our brothers and sisters, fishing them to bring them in. And when we bring them in, they need to see what the full basket looks like. And when they get in here and they see that we are in decent, we are decent people, we are men and women that are in order according to God, we are the Israelites, and this is the way God's people are supposed to be. That's what our people have to be shown. So it is important for us to make sure that we carry ourselves properly according to the scriptures and also deal with our people that same way. So when we do talk to them, when they're in these far out places, they actually, what they see is what they get. Because our people are about, our people will try you. And rightfully so. When the brother was, the brother was telling us, he was saying, listen, I want to see if you brothers are real. And other brothers that was teaching him, you know, the brother said, no, you go home and check out and see if what we're telling you is the truth. That's, and he was saying, that's what, you know, he was saying that that's what he's going to do. And I was backing him up. I said, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Check and see if we're real. Check and see what we're talking about. Is it the truth? That's, that's how you win people over. That's how you win them to the gospel of Christ. We're not trying to win them over to IUIC per se. We're trying to win them because it's our job to be an example to our people that are still on the outside. That's what it is. Just like somebody was an example to me, somebody was an example to these men, and someone was an example to you. Okay, that's what our job is. Okay, and as we do this, the Lord is looking for a certain number of our people to become sealed up, and then he's going to send, send the angels in Christ to take us out of this captivity and put us in rulership all over this planet Earth. So there's a method to our madness, if you will. Okay, because that's what the Most High said. So read that again. Matthew, Matthew, 10, Matthew uh, chap 10 and 6. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what the Most High wants us to do. The lost sheep of the house of Israel is not in the place where a bunch of Edomites are. The lost sheep of the house of Israel is where our people are. When we were in, when we traveled, there was a place that we went. I keep forgetting where we, I don't know if it was in Trinidad or Jamaica, one of these areas. And we went to this place called Laventil. I remember the name. And they say, you going up there, you might not come back. That's how dangerous it is up there. They said, even the cops don't go up there. You know what I'm saying? So we, you know us, Bishop, hey, that's where we going. Let's go. Dun, 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 dun. I'm just kidding. But we went. We went up there and we taught. And when we were teaching, there's something that's, that's great when you teach your people and you see their eyes light up with truth. You see their eyes light up with stuff that they never heard before. And to come to find out that they themselves are the subjects of the greatest book on the planet Earth, the Bible. And you, and you get to be a part of that as a brother that's teaching, as a sister that's leading by example. When she gets to talk to her sisters and she gets to see that the sisters change and the sisters, sisters see examples of how they can be rather than what they've been taught negatively that they can't be. Y'all feel me? That's what our job is. So... That's why I'm reading what we read here. Read that six again. Read uh, 10 and 6 again. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to the Israelites. Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to the people who don't know who they are. Go to the downtrodden. Go to the people that hate themselves. Go to the people who mistreat themselves, abuse themselves. Go to those people. That's what the most high tell. So we are supposed to go into those areas. That's what the people need. When the brothers said that nobody comes up here, it's because people scared. What are you scared for? These are your people. You understand? Now I know that there's a, 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 an element of danger. You know, you're going into bang, gang banging situations and, you know, uh, different things going on. So, yes, we have to be careful. We have a military order in how we deal. We do. 
well, we, we you know, we, we, we send people out, and we have backup and all that, those kinds of things as well. But, but we still have to deal with those brothers. You understand? We still have to reach out to them and let them know, say, listen, you are part of us. This gospel is not just for us. It's for you, too. Y'all understand that? So that's where we're coming from. Read. Read on. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go. And as we get to where our people are downtrodden, where our people are abused, mentally abused, drunk, all messed up, they need to hear a message to help get them out of the problems that they're in. So as we go, what do we do? Preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So when it says preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it's written in another part of the scriptures that tell us exactly what we do. Where's that one that says repent ye? Where's that at? Read that. Let me see. There's one in the Gospels that I can't think of right now. Uh, what was it? Somebody said it. Hold on. Let me see. Maybe that's it. Hold on. Right on. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. From, from that time, Jesus began to preach. From the time that Jesus began to preach, and from that time, Jesus began to preach and say what? And to say, repent. 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 That's the message. Our message to our brothers and sisters that are in these places that are neglected, that are ignored, that nobody wants to go see, the message is to reach them. To teach them to repent. So we have to go to these areas. Read what it says. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Give me uh, uh, math, um, the one the Pharisees said unto him, when the kingdom of God. Where's that at? All of a sudden, I've drawn these blanks in my mind. I used to have these scriptures like, boom. Uh, the Pharisees demanded of him when the kingdom of God. That one. I can't think of the scripture for, the, for nothing. Is it John 20, 17, 20, something like that? Or Matthew 17, 20? I don't think that's it. Hold on a second. That might be it. What does it say there? I know it's a 17 and a 20 involved in it. Read it. Yeah, I know when I see it. I know I have these things marked. Uh, Luke. Uh, yep, Luke that's 17, it. 20. Se 17, 20, and 21. Come on. Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. Stay with me now. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees. And when Christ was demanded of the Pharisees, the Pharisees is de demanding answers from Jesus. Read it again. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. So we've been reading earlier in Matthews, it said that for us to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as we go, we preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's one of the messages. Then we went to uh, Matthew 4 and 17, I believe it was, right? And we read where the word repent was added into that. And from the time Jesus started preaching, he began to say, preach. I mean, he began to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So there's, well, as the kingdom of heaven is coming at hand, there's something that's required before that. And the scripture said, repent, because, that's what four mean, repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So in other words, there's something that we need to do in order to prepare for the coming kingdom. Y'all all right? There's something that is required for us to do. Because the kingdom of heaven is coming. So the question is, is the kingdom of heaven just coming per se? Like it's just going to land on us? How is this kingdom going to be brought in? Let's find out. Luke chapter uh, 17 verse 20. Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, 
The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Oh, wait a minute. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Observation meaning that you're standing in one place and you are observing it from another spot. You're observing it as is as is as if it was coming down. I'm observing the kingdom come. But the scriptures ain't saying that. The scripture says, read it again. The kingdom of God what the, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. It cometh not with observation. So let's find out what that means. Read on. Neither shall shall they say, Lo here. Or not, lo neither. There. So not he's saying it's not coming with observation. That's number one. Number two, neither shall man say that it is over here. Oh, go ahead. Or low there. Or low there. Low there it is over there. No man, man is not going to say that it's coming with observation. Neither shall he say that it's coming from over here or over there. Listen. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. For behold, this kingdom that you're looking for is within you. Is within you. So if it's within us, we need to look inside of us to see where is the kingdom. Because this is Christ himself speaking. He said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. How does that work? That's the question. How does that work? That works because as we, I'm going to jump to something totally different. Give me the book of Judith. Let me read it now. Give me Judith chapter 5. So I'm, I'm never, I have stuff written and I end up going off. But it's all right. Y'all all right? The book of Judith, chapter 5, I read this often, but I like this thing. I remember when the bishop first brought this out, it was under, we was at, um, we was on Eastern Parkway in New York, in Brooklyn, and he was going over our people breaking the laws, and he was like, you don't know where your power is. He was talking to Israel, our people that was there. He was saying, you, we don't know where our power is. We're up there trying to get, quote, unquote, black power, this kind of power, that kind of power. And we did not, we as a people do not recognize literally where our power base lies. And so he brought this out, and I never forgot it. I never forgot it. Uh, Judith chapter 5, verse 3. Let's read verse 3 first. Judith chapter 5 and verse 3. Keep in context of the lesson so far, right? Keep, keep the scriptures lined up. And he said unto them, tell me now, ye sons of Chanan. This was this King Holophanes. He wanted the, of sons of Canaan. Uh, King Holophanes wanted to know where is the, uh, wait, let me read the verse again. Read it again. And he said unto them, tell me now, ye sons of Chanan. Of Canaan. Go ahead. Uh, who this people is. Who is this people? The people that he was talking about were the Israelites. Okay? That's what he was talking about. He, was saying, he said, who is this people just coming out of captivity? Who are these people that's on the hill? Because he was looking at us from a distance. And just like any king, especially a wrathful king or, or a wicked king. Y'all all right? A wicked king is going to want to conquer everybody. And if he has everybody in captivity, then he sees one group that's not underneath his belt. He wants to know about that group. Y'all all right? You know, that, that's really something heavy when you think about it. I was having a conversation with, um, um, with, 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 with some brothers and sisters. This was a while back. And I was making a point, and I said that you might have, think about some of these low-down men. Not, just, just ride with me for a minute. When I say low-down men, I'm talking about men that look for our young sisters, knock them up, defile them. Y'all all right? That, 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 you know, and they don't want the whore. I'm talking about the whore monger brother. He don't want the whore that, that slept with everybody. He want the one that's been untouched. He want the one that, 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 you understand? He want the pure one, the one that has not been defiled. He want to go after that one. You follow me? Because that's the way, that's the way conquerors are. They don't want, they don't, they don't want to, uh, mess with what they already got subdued, they want to go after that brother or that sister that is undefiled. Y'all all right? You know, and um, it, I see this happen often in all kinds of scenarios. 
You understand? They always want to turn out so-and-so. They want to turn this one out. They want to turn that one out. The ones that's already turned out, they already beat them. They, don't, they ain't interested in them no more. I want to get that one that's resistant. Y'all all right? So that's what's happening here. He wants to know about that one people. What about them? Read that again. And he said unto them, tell me now, ye sons of Canaan, who this people is. Who is this people? Go ahead. That dwell in the hill country. Go ahead. And, and what are the cities that they inhabit? He's asking these questions because he want to know where their strength lies. Okay. Remember, I'm reading about our power base now. So the first thing he's asking, they say, and where is the cities that they dwell in? Why would he want to know this? Because he wants to know how much that he need to take them down. This goes back into counting the cost so you can understand. Whenever you look to subdue an enemy or even a, excuse me, or even a perceived enemy, you want to make sure that you have enough in your, in your platoon to take over that army. So you want to get intelligence. You want to get information. You want to get intel about What's going on over there? And once you get all of that, then you can size up what you need to overtake them. Huh? That's common sense. So that's why he's asking these questions. Read these questions again. He said what? Who this people is. Who is this people? That's number one. In other words, give me the history on these people. Because history is important. Let me say that again. The history of a people is important. The history and the image of a people is Tells you how you need to deal with them. You got people talking about some history ain't important. People do things to you based on your history. Based on what, what is your reputation. Based on what's in your background. You follow me? Have you ever met somebody, because I've seen this happen plenty of times. People always abuse those who they know. That's because they know them. But they ain't going to abuse some cat that just walked up. They say, I don't know nothing about it. This dude might have a bazooka in his back, back pocket. You understand? But they try to feel you out. Get to know him. Rap with him a little bit. Let's go out this and that and the other. Trying to get all your secrets. And once they find out who you are, then they go in for the kill. That's what an enemy does. Y'all all right? Read. That dwell in the hill country. So... The Lord, is, the Lord is showing us how our enemies deal with us. So who is this people? What's their history? Who are they? Go ahead. That dwell in the hill country. And what are the cities that they inhabit? And how many cities do they inhabit? Maybe they have garrisons, military garrisons or something. What are they rolling with? What kind of strength do they have? Go ahead. And what is the multitude of their army? That's crystal clear. What is the multitude of their armies? Because if I don't know how many they have in their army, I ain't going to know how much I'm going to need to overthrow them. Y'all all right? That's the question. So this is what the enemy wanted to do. Give me what verse? That was the end of that verse? Uh, no, sir. Read. And wherein is their power oh, and strength? Oh, Lord have mercy. That's the question right there. Where is their power? That's the question for us. That's when the bishop brought that out in the street. He was saying, you blacks and Hispanics, Native American Indians, the 12 tribes of Israel, you, although we're in the streets, we shall overcome. We shall, no, they ain't going to get no power from that. You need to know where your power is. And that's what this king is asking here, this governor. Read that again. And where is their power? And where is their power? Go ahead. And strength. And where is their strength? Go ahead. And what king is set over them? And I want to know who your leader is so I can kill him. I want to know. He ain't going to say that, but that's what he means. I need to know where they're getting their uh, uh, strategies from. Where are they getting their organizational skills in order to formulate this, these cities? When you knock the head out, that means you've knocked out the control center that set up the cities, that set up the armies, that set up this, that set up that. He wants to knock the light out. Boop. So that's why he's asking the question. So what is he saying? He's looking for where our power is. Y'all all right? The, now, what happens here, is that the end of the verse? Uh, no, sir, just a little bit more. Go ahead. Or captain of their army. Or who's the captain of their army. So the question is, he's looking 
for how he's looking for how to take them out. So he's looking for the power source that got them all set up. So the question is, what do we what do we do with this understanding? Because if our enemy is trying to find out where our power is, that means they're trying to take us out. So all of this history was ran down to this man. He told him when you read when you read through this, he goes through the history about us coming out of Egypt, about us. Uh, about how the Lord backed us up when we obeyed the laws of the Most High. He took us through a whole lot. Of, he, he explained a whole lot of history Did he got up to this point here. Now give me verse, um, uh, yeah, I think it's 20. Yes, sir, read verse 20. Judah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor. Read verse 18. Verse 18. But when they departed from the way, which he appointed them. But when we started the breaking the laws of the Most High, hold up, you know what? Some of this stuff is some good stuff. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Yes, sir. Read verse 17. Thank you. Judah chapter Every, 5. Everybody's with me. So the, the conversation is about where is their power? Go ahead. Verse 17. Judah chapter 5 and verse 17. So um, basically, so from up to this point, this man goes through all of this history, and he shows that Israel is the children of the Most High, and that God is with them. So he runs this history down. Read verse 17. And, and, and while us, they sinned not before and their God. So as long as we were not sinning, go ahead. They prospered. We prospered. And that's what was happening in the earlier chapters when we was coming out. The Most High said he would be with us when we keep the laws, when we keep the commandments. So that's the reason why, again, it's important that we be honorable with each other in terms of keeping God's commandments. Read. Because the God that hateth iniquity. Because the God that what? Hateth iniquity. Because the God that hates sin. Go ahead. Was with them. He was with us when we were obeying his commandments. The God of the God that hates sin was with us. I'm going to let you in a minute. The God that hates sin was with us. What do you want to bring out? I ain't going to forget my point. Go. And it, uh, a little early in the chapter, if you read, when y'all get home, read this whole chapter. But um, there's one thing that I, I wanted everybody to notice that, you know, this brother um, that was telling Halophanes the story about our history, this brother knew our history. Exactly. He knew our history, and it ain't changed. It's the same thing today. As we will find out later, they know our history, and they know what makes us successful, and they know what causes us to be at the bottom. How is it that, that, this, that this man, I think it was an Ammonite, uh, how is it that he knew our history? How is it that he knew our history? I'm asking the question now. How is it that he knew our history? I'm going to read the scripture. Um, you got it? How? Uh, Yehoshua, our renown went throughout the earth. What, what what renown went out throughout the earth? What do you mean? Uh, our history, our culture. That's why you can look through history and see other nations doing things that we did in the past. Okay, I'm glad I asked you to explain that. Um, you're almost there, but that's not hitting it where I want to hit it. But I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Give me Exodus 9 and 16. That's what I need. Exodus, I'm almost giving it away just by telling you where it's at. Exodus chapter 9 and 16. Exodus chapter 9. Y'all all right? Let's read. Exodus chapter 9 and verse 16. Start with verse 14. Verse 14. 14. For I hold will. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> Uh, read verse 12. 12 to 16. Read. Exodus chapter 9 and verse 12. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened the heart of... What? The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. I don't know if, if y'all think deep on this. What happened? Who knows where we at? This is the easy part of the Bible. 
what's happening here? Who knows? What's going on here? Anybody? Okay, stand up. Give him the microphone. What's happening here? This is going to Let's go back to what we read with Judith now. Shalom, Nashon. Shalom. How captivity. you doing, my brother? How what is doing? it? We're in captivity in Egypt. We, we are in captivity in Egypt. Yes, that's what was going on. But this particular verse where it says, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Tell me about that part. Whenever um, Moses was sent to talk to Pharaoh and Pharaoh refused to hearken to the words of God that he spoke through Moses. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh refused and God passed down judgment through Moses as what he was spoken to him. Okay, good, good. He did a good job. But I'm going to go deeper than that. Read that verse again. <laughs> and the Lord. Stop. Read it again. And the Lord. Stop. Read it again. And the Lord. And the Lord. Go ahead. Hardened. Stop. So who did it? The Lord. What did the Lord do? Read on. Harden the heart of Pharaoh. So what does that mean? Just like you were saying, my brother. Moses, because at first, Moses didn't want to go. Just dig, just dig how powerful the most high is. This is the kind of God we have. We're talking about some, where's the power at? How are we going to get the kingdom? I'm, parallel, I'm bringing this all the way back to the kingdom now. Everybody's with me. The question is, Moses was told to go down into Egypt. And Moses knew. He said, wait a minute. You want me? To go down there and deal with big, bad Pharaoh? He said, what power am I going to be able to subdue and win? Because he's got this, he's got that. How am I going to do it? And that's when the Mosai told him, give me that in the fourth chapter. Exodus 4. This is what, this is what the Mosai had to show him. So I want you to, I want you to, I want y'all to relish what I'm about to show y'all. Some of y'all are going to like this if y'all don't know where I'm going. Uh, four and six. Uh, Exodus chapter 4 and verse 6. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, but now thine hand. No, nope, read it again. Put the word. You, you skipped something. Word didn't sound right. And Ain't the, no but in there. And read the, again. Yes, sir. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. So he's had to show Moses that he was with him. This is after the argument. But I can't go down there and deal with, with him. He said, don't worry, I got you. And I'm going to show you that I got you. Put your hand into your bosom. Go ahead. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. So when Moses put his hand into his bosom, like the vesture, you know, like a, um, you know, the vesture was like it crossed over, you know, and you could put your hand inside one side of it. Y'all all right? Uh, similar to a karate gear, if you will. You ever seen how a karate gear is made? And it flaps and then another part flap over it, and you can stick your hand on the one side of it? That was called the bosom inside its thing. Read it again. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. Put, down, put forth your hand into your bosom, Moses. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold... His hand was leprous as snow. His hand was, when he took his hand out, his hand was leprous as opposed to the rest of his body. What it said, his hand was what? His hand was leprous as snow. Leprous as snow, meaning that the brown color on his hand was missing. Let me say that again. Meaning that the brown color of his hand was missing. So what did I tell you about Moses? He was a black man. Because his hand came out leprous. Letting you know what, what these white people got. Leprosy. I ain't trying to rank on them. That's the truth. They got leprosy. They're clean lepers, but they're leprosy. That's leprosy. When you got it in spots, that's bits of it. That's what they call an unclean lepers. So when he took his hand out, his hand was leprous. Read on. Verse 7. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. It was turned back brown. Okay. So that's enough to show Moses. You, 
Here you are. Imagine somebody say, imagine the most I say, listen, I need you to go down there and and take down Washington. Well, I don't want to say because somebody might take this tape and be like talking about I'm saying something crazy. So I gotta think like that. You know, you you sent on a mission to do something that you figure you just can't do. I don't have the power to do it. I can't change it. The Lord says, Don't worry, I got you. Huh? You got me? How? Then the Lord says, put your hand into your bosom, your black hand now. And then you pull it out, and it, oh, hell. You look at it, and you freak out. Then the Lord says, see, I told you I got you. If I could do that, I could do anything. You all dig it? So he's letting Moses know that he's got him. You all all right? That's the point there. Now let's go back to the ninth chapter. Follow me now. Exodus chapter 9 and verse 12. Yes, sir. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. So when Moses went there and started and de delivering the plagues and all of that, that's enough to make him say, listen, man, I'm letting you guys go. Because that's what he did, right? Y'all all right? He finally broke and let the Israelites go. But when the Lord says that he hardened Pharaoh's heart, meaning under normal circumstances, if you will, a normal person, after seeing that kind of power, will be like, listen, I can't fight against this God. Let them go. The Most High said, no, I don't want you to let them. I don't want you to let them go. I'm going to harden your heart. I'm going to make you resist me. Because I want to destroy you in front of all of them. That's what the Lord did. That's what was known all over the earth. That's what was being told to Holophanes. Y'all all right? Now you're getting it? Read that again. Watch this. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. So although Pharaoh would have let him go, because you can read in other parts, because he says this a few times in this, in this book, Exodus. It says, but the Lord hardened his heart. Because the Lord wanted him to resist the power. The Lord did that. The Lord wanted Pharaoh to resist. Even though he's showing him power that you normally would be, okay, I'll let him go. He want to let him go and say, you know what? <laughs> Resist. Why would the Lord do that? You're talking about the love Lord, the love, the Lord loves everybody. He's using, he says, he, what is he use the word ransom? He said, I ransomed off nations for you. That's what he's doing. He treats the other nations like nothing because of you. He is the one that hardened Pharaoh's heart to make Pharaoh resist. Read. <laughs> and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Go ahead. And he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. And, and, the, holy, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, meaning the words, as the Lord has spoken unto Moses. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go, that they may serve me. So wait a minute. So at one side, he's making Pharaoh resist. Then he's telling Moses, go down there and tell him to let my people go. Y'all getting this? So he said, go down there and tell him, let my people go. Okay. He go down there and he tell him. And then the Lord says, but while you're telling him that, I'm going to make him say no. That's what this is saying. Ain't that a terrible power? You don't want to mess with this. He's saying, listen, normally you would let him go, but before you let him go, I'm going to make you say no. Wow. Y'all better be glad y'all the Israelites. He get a lot of half of that thing. <laughs> Read on. Verse 14. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart. Because I want him to say no because I want to send all my plagues on him. I don't want him to say let him go yet. No, 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 because I didn't release all the plagues yet. I want to put more on him. This can't be the Bible. <laughs> this can't be. This can't be, what, this, this can't be the Bible. We got to be reading this wrong. Y'all all right? Read, for I will at this time 
Send all my plagues <laughs> upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. So the Most High wanted to show the Israelites, listen, there is no power besides me. These gods that Egypt have, because we was worshiping them gods. We were made to worship them gods, just like we are made to worship these gods in this land here. That's what's the same thing that's happening back there. He says, but I need to show my people that your gods are nothing. I'm going to be against all your gods. All of the plagues that the Most High sent up, was they were particular to the different gods that Egypt had. The frogs and all that. All of those different plagues that were sent was to destroy their actual gods. The ten plagues that was dealing with different gods than that the Egyptians had Israel fearing. So the Lord wanted to not only shut Pharaoh down, but he wanted to shut down his gods as well. That's why he made Pharaoh say no, so that he can exercise execution on all the gods. Wow. Read. For now I will stretch out my hand that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence. And thou shall be cut off from the earth. And that's the reason why they are base people. The actual original Egyptians are not the people who you think they are. The, uh, the original Egyptians are sitting on the ground like nothing. I'm talking about the real ones. The Watusis and, 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 and the Zulus. They got nothing, huh? They got mud to sit on. That's it. Those are the real ones. Now, I ain't talking about these white ones running around here. Those are the Greco-Roman babies that came out of Alexander when they went and conquered Egypt. That's who's over there running around here now talking about some we some Egyptians. Those are Edomites. The real Egyptians are the ones that's in the back got nothing. Y'all all right? Read. And in very deed for this cause. What verse are you in? Verse 16. This is the verse I wanted to get to. And in very deed. Go ahead. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up. Have I raised thee up meaning that I harden Pharaoh's heart. That's what he's saying. For, in other words, for this, for this purpose, this is the reason why I hardened Pharaoh's heart. Y'all all right? He's telling the reason why he hardened Pharaoh's heart. He could have let him go a long time ago with, before he did the place. He said, no, 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 no. I need to harden his heart so that I can spend all my plagues on him. And now he's telling you the reason here in verse 16. Read. For to show in thee, my power. Because I want to show how powerful I am by destroying your whole system. That's what the Most High said. So I had to raise this bully up, make him fear among everybody, giving him the power. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Fight against me. He's instigating the fight. Pharaoh would have laid back. He said, no, no, no. Get back out there and fight me so I can kill you in front of everybody. That's what's happening here. Go ahead. Read that again. And in very deed, for this cause, have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power. For to show through you my power. In other words, I'm going to channel my power through you. By destroying you, everybody's going to know how powerful I am. Go ahead. And that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. That's the point there. That's what, how he got known. That's how the Israelites got known, because they remember what the Lord did to the Egyptian power. They remember. This is what this man is running off. Go back to that Judith. That's what he's running off to him. Yes. Judith, chapter 5 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. and, whilest, and whilest they sinned not before their God, they prospered. Because the God that hateth iniquity was with them. The God that hates iniquity was with us. Go ahead. But when they departed from the way. Which so what's happening here? Here the Lord has showed all his power. Y'all know what happened in the wilderness. We became nookers. We started doing all kinds of evil against the Most High right there in the sight. And the Most High had to open up the ground and kill like 15,000 of us all in one shot. Open up the ground. Then he had to make sure that that whole generation got wiped out, died. And the only people that came from the original group that came out of Egypt into the promised land was two people, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. That's the only two. Everybody else died, including Moses. 
Read. Verse 18. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles. So the quest, the point is, when we keep the laws of God, the God that hates iniquity would do, like we read, what he did with Pharaoh. But whenever when we start to break God's laws and turn away from him, then it said this God that hates iniquity, we were, de we were destroyed in many battles. That's what Deuteronomy 28, um, no, give me Luke, let's read that. Give me Luke chapter um, uh, 21 and 20. Luke chapter 21 and 20. Y'all all right? To, when you think about Egypt, Egypt was so powerful that our people today still seek back to Egypt for wisdom. That's how powerful Egypt is or was at that time, and we don't even realize it. That's why the Most High had to destroy them so that everybody in the world would know who the true God was. That's how powerful Egypt was, that our people are still hooked on an Egyptian mindset from over 2,000 years ago. But you know what those, it, but it's the same now. Egypt then was the superpower on earth, just as the United States is now. That's a comparison. That's Romans 9 and 17. So uh, where are we at? Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. So we were reading something that caused me to go there. Hold on a second. Let me get it back. Um, we was in the, we was in, where was we at reading in the Apocrypha? Where uh, were we at? It was Judith 5 and 18. We were at 18. Read 18 again. I got to get my thought back. Judith chapter 5 and verse 18. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles. That's the part that I needed. We were destroyed in many battles. He said, but when we broke the laws of the Most High, we were destroyed in many battles. That's the reason why I'm going over to Luke now. All right. We were destroyed in many battles. We're going to read about it now. Luke chapter... Uh, 21 and 20. Read. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then know that the destruction that was promised to happen is near. When you read it in Daniels. Go ahead. Then know that the destruction is near. Go ahead. Verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea Flee to the mountains. So the Israelites that was in Jerusalem at that time was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, primarily the southern kingdom. He said, but let them which be in Jerusalem at that time flee to the mountains. The mountains was the same place was Christ was taken, was Christ went to when Herod was looking to kill him. Okay, because this was being said by Christ to the Israelites. So Christ is telling the Israelites to, to flee for safety, the same place where his father took him to flee from the safe to flee for safety in the time when Herod was looking for him. Matthew 2, let's read that for those that don't know. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Let's find out what these mountains are. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, saying, Joseph was, the, was the biological father of Jesus. Go ahead. Say, Rosen did what? Saying, arise and take the young child. Jesus, r arise and take the young child. Go ahead. And his mother. And his mother. And flee into Egypt. And flee into Egypt. Go ahead. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So where did Jesus, where was Jesus taken to? To hide from the Romans that was set to kill him? In Egypt, which is in Africa. Y'all all right? So now let's go back to where we was at in Luke. Now Luke. that Jesus is grown now. Read verse 20 again. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. 
And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. So Christ is grown and he's telling the Israelites, he said, listen, Israel, you Jew, Jude, Judeans, so you can understand the Jews that was in Judea. He said, whenever you see Jerusalem surrounded with Roman armies, go ahead. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then know that the destruction is near. The destruction you read about in Deuteronomy and what you read in the book of Daniels, the abomination of desolation. That's what he's talking about. Read. And let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Those that are in Jerusalem flee to the mountains. Go ahead. And let them. The mountains is the same place where Jesus was taken into. That's the point. Go ahead. This is how we got into Africa. A lot of people trying to figure out how the world of the Jews get sold from Africa to America. This is the history that puts it together. We fled into Jerusalem at this point. Over a million of them. Rudolf R. Windsor in his book called Babylon and Timbuktu tells about that. And there's other writings that tell you the same thing, that Jews, that when Jerusalem was overthrown, millions of Jews were fleeing out of there because of the onslaught of the Roman Empire that was killing us. And we were fleeing into Egypt for, for, to hide. Okay? So uh, roughly 1,600 years later began the slave trade because we was all on the West Coast. We, we, but we had migrated up to the west coast primarily. Some of us went down into the interiors of Africa. That's the reason why we're all in the other areas. Mali, Songhai, all them areas, okay? Angola, all, we all in those places. 16, 70 AD to the 1600s, that's a lot of years. So we all up in there. Y'all all right? Read. A and lot of migration going on. Come on. And let them which are in the midst of it, and depart let them out. them that are in the midst of Jerusalem depart out. That's the Jews that was in, that's the southern kingdom read. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein The ones that are in the countries were the tribes that were scattered abroad, like you read James 1 and 1, to the 12 tribes that were scattered abroad greeting. These were the Israelites that was already outside of Jerusalem at this time. Y'all all right? Read. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance. For these be the days of vengeance. Come on. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. That all things which are what? Written may be fulfilled. That's Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. So when those, when those curses came upon us, that's how we got sold on the slave ships. That's how the yokes of iron came on upon our neck. That's how all these curses came about. That all of those things that Moses wrote about, now we're going to start to pay for them. That's what he's saying here in Luke. Everybody's with me so far. All praise to the Most High. Now, let's go back to uh, Judith. Judith, chapter 5 and verse 18. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore. We were destroyed in many battles very sore. That's what we just got through reading. And we shall fall by the edge of the sword. Oh, go back to that. I ain't finished that. Go back to uh, Luke. And we, you said we were destroyed in many battles. Although what we're reading here took place after what we're reading about Holophanes, but we kept sinning. So that prophecy of us constantly messing up was going to continue to get us. Because we still haven't learned to return to the Lord as a people. Read. Luke chapter 21 and verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. That's talking about pregnant mothers and mothers with young babies. He said, woe be unto them because the Romans going to come through with those swords and chop them up. Go ahead. For there shall be great distress in the land. And that you read about that in the book of Deuteronomy, the siege that the Romans put upon us. When you read like verses 53, 54, 55, 56, verses like that, you read about that. That's what that's talking about. Read. And wrath upon this people. Because the Most High was angry with us. He said he's going to put wrath on us because of our constant disobedience. That's what this man was telling Holophanes. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. That's the falling in many battles. Not only did we fall in many battles prior to this thing being told to Holophanes, we kept on sinning, and this happened all the way up to 70 A.D. 
and we shall fall by the edge of the sword. Y'all all right? Read. And shall be led away captive unto all nations. And that's what happened to us. We was led into captivity into all nations. That's important to understand that part right there. That's letting you know that the Israelites are in every nation. Okay? So when the, when the gospel said, go ye to all nations and preach the gospel and all of that, it's talking about to those Israelites that are scattered in those nations. That's what it means. Y'all all right? That's how that goes. It ain't talking about sending it to white people and Arabs and all that. It's talking about to the Israelites that are scattered. Like when you read Revelation chapter 7, when it talks about there was a great multitude coming out of all nations and tongues and all of that, that's talking about the Israelites that were scattered in these areas. How, how is it that they repented and was able to be among, the, among that group in Revelation 7 that coming out with their robes white and all that? How were they able to get repentance? Through the sanctuaries that are currently being set up in all of these countries now. That's the reason why we ain't just in America. That's the reason why we're in Brussels. That's the reason why we're in Spain, Germany, France. That's the reason why we're in Africa. Because the Israelites are scattered into all of these nations. And the sanctuaries are there to gather them up so that they can repent and be the proper examples to the rest of our people. The same thing that's going on here is going on in all these other sanctuaries. Y'all understand that? That's what's happening. Okay, so when I talk about the, like I was saying earlier, when I talk about the importance of how we act among each other, that's not only pertinent to where we're at now, but that, that's pertinent to every sanctuary in IUIC. We demand that because we understand, what the, we understand the prophecy of this Bible. We understand that we're in, we're in prophecy times. Y'all all right? Read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the nations. That's who's in Jerusalem now, the white man. Trodden it down, calling himself a Jew. That's what it's telling you right there. He's not a Jew. It's telling you flat out right there that Jerusalem shall be walked upon by bastards, so you can understand. Give me that in Zechariah, because somebody might say, Deacon, y'all are using bad words. Give me, <laughs> give me Zechariah <laughs> 9 and 6. I ain't had to call this man out here. Deacon, come down here and, and he up there saying stuff like this here. That's blasphemous. <laughs> stone him. Stone him. <laughs> nine and six. Zechariah chapter nine and verse six. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Wait a minute. Hold it. Maybe that's the word that I put in there. Is, is, did, I, did I cross out the regular word and put that word in there? And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Ashdod, if I'm not mistaken, is a seaport city in Jerusalem that the Philistines used to occupy. Okay, that's a seaport city in, in uh, Tel it was, it was now called Tel Aviv. I'll just say it that way. Now, modern day Tel Aviv. Ah, uh, so that's who's in there. A bastard is dwelling in our homeland. Okay. It's modern-day Tel Aviv. Let me just give that answer. Modern-day Tel Aviv. I was trying to remember some other things that I thought I read somewhere, uh, Seaport City in um, Jerusalem. But I remember reading that it was actually, it's Tel Aviv, what they call now Tel Aviv. Y'all all right? Uh, let's go back to where we was at. Judith. No, we did, did we finish that in Luke? Uh no, sir. Finish that in Luke. Luke. We got to move a little faster. Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword when the Romans was chasing after us. Come on. And shall be led away captive unto all nations. And that's where we at, into all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the nations. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. How long are they going to be in our homeland? Until their time is up. That's what that means. Until their time is fulfilled. Until their time is up. Until their rulership is up. And when is their rulership going to be up? But what's going to bring Christ? Okay, the 140. Give me that, Romans, uh, Revelation 7. Let's read it. Let's see what's holding it up. This is what, the, this is what was being said in Phar and when the uh, Pharisees demanded of Christ. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 3. One, start with one. We'll Revelation. Real quick. Yes, Come sir. on. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels 
standing on the four corners of the earth. These four angels are these four angels are the angels of the Most High: Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, and I forget the other one. These, these four angels that's holding these wreck, these holding, and Michael. Is it Michael? I think so. Read. Holding the four winds of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth. The four winds. What kind of wind is it talking about? Winds of destruction. They ain't talking about regular wind. Because if these angels are holding back wind and it's regular wind, is the wind blowing now? So it ain't talking about that kind of wind. So what kind of wind are these angels holding back? The wind of destruction. Read. That the wind should not blow on the earth. That the wind, these angels were told to hold back the winds and do not allow the winds to blow on this earth. Go ahead. Nor on the sea. Nor on the sea because on the sea are battleships. Let's talk about in these times where we're reading that. Come on. Where we're no, living at. Nor on any tree. Or nor on any tree. So this wind is not to blow on the trees either. This wind is talking about nuclear fire. That's what it's talking about. Read. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. So the, another angel came that was, that was to speak to these four angels. Another angel came from the east and did what? Read Asc it again. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. So this angel that came from the east, not only did he come, but he also came with the seal of the living God. Give me Isaiah 8 and 16. Let's find out what the seal is. What did this angel come with this seal? Listen good. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. So when the law is being sealed up among the Israelites, that's going to cause them to repent. So that's what he means. He says, seal the law among my disciples. And that's what we all had to learn. That's what caused us to repent. We had to repent and keep God's commandments. That's what it's talking about. So... This angel that came from the east came with the commandments and came and started sealing us up. Y'all all right? Read. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Having the seal of the living God, meaning the commandments. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth. What was the job of these four angels? To, to, to hurt, the, somebody said it, to hurt, their job was to hurt the earth. You ain't going to hurt the earth with regular wind. You hurt the earth with destruction. That's what their job was. Their job was to work on the minds of these kings that are in these areas to make them build weapons to shoot them at each other. That's what these angels were doing. They caused them to build weapons. That's why they got them now. The Most High said, I want them to build these weapons. But then another angel said, but wait, don't shoot it yet. Why? Go ahead. To whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. So this angel came and said to these angels, hurt not the earth, neither the trees. Don't do it yet. Go ahead. Till. We have sealed the servants of our God. Don't do it until we have sealed the servants of our God in their what? In their foreheads. Because in your forehead is your brain. In your forehead is where the laws of God is going to be at. Because if you don't have the laws or the mark of God in your head, what do you have? The mark of the beast. That's what that's talking about. Y'all follow me? It ain't talking about some doggone chip with these stupid Israelites running around and talking about some chip. That ain't talking about that. It's talking about the mark of sin in your mind. That's what that means. Okay? Y'all all right? You either have the mark of sin or you have the mark of God. That's how that goes. Y'all all right? Read that again. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the tree, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God. Meaning until I have taught them the laws of the Most High. The commandments, like, like, like the man, the young man asked Christ, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Christ said, keep the commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Go ahead. In their foreheads. In their forehead, because that's where your brain is. You either have the mark of sin or you have the mark of the commandments. Ain't talking about somebody putting a crayon and marking something. That ain't talking about that at all. Ain't talking about somebody putting some chip in your head either. 
That's ridiculous. A chip ain't going to make nobody sin. What the hell is wrong with people? Read. Verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. So he's now he's going to say, and I heard the number of them that this angel coming from the east with the seal. How many of them are to be sealed with this? Read. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So now we got some understanding. Everybody's with me so far, right? So the objective is for us to do what? Right. So, but you just said it. Our objective is to take what we've learned and to help seal up our brothers so that this number can be complete. Because once that number is complete, what's going to happen? Christ return and destroy our enemies. That's what the, the three verses was just talking about. Do y'all see that? Do y'all really see that? That's heavy, ain't it? Can y'all dig it? <laughs> okay. Gee, can I say something yeah. real quick? What does Israel mean? I heard we brought it out to camp today. What does the name Israel mean? Brother right there. Stand up and state your name. Shalom, leadership. Shalom, bro. brother Yehoshua. Uh, Israel is it means prince of the power of God, prince with the power of God. Okay, is he right, brothers? Can we give me a scripture right quick? Just listening Just, to that right there, it, it it should help you to see how powerful this 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 awakening is in the land today, how prophecy is unfolding right before our eyes. Mm -hmm. We don't realize who got the scripture. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has power, has thou power with God. Has thou power with God. We don't realize the power we have with God by keeping these law, statutes, commandments, by rehearsing these righteous acts, because y'all, we just come out of Feast of Tabernacles, right? You see more people coming in and rehearsing these righteous acts, but you know the showdown's getting, the real show getting ready to come soon, sooner than we think. We just rehearsing right now. It's vital and very important that we come and sit amongst coming together today, unifying, keeping the Sabbath. It means a lot. Prince has that power with God. Y'all don't realize the power you have with God just by keeping these law, statutes, commandments. And the, and the other nations are fearing it. They're seeing it. People walk around down at the Feast of Tabernacles marking. They, they set their own stuff up, marking trees just to make more spots, to cut down trees to make more camp spots, thinking they're going to prosper off of us coming in there set up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. They see us in the Walmart buying all the tent stuff. But they don't realize they destruction coming. The more of our people wake up and coming back to these law, statute, commandments. You understand that? So that thing ought to make, make you rejoice inside because Prince has that power with God. I'll, I'll praise him. I'll praise him. So y'all see that, right? So as we teach it, as we, like was, what it's saying in Revelation, these four angels, their job was to cause these nations to destroy each other. But the Lord sent another angel, said, tell them not to do it yet because I have to wake up my elect. And once they get awakened, then release it. That's how that's going to go down. That's how that's going to go down. Y'all got it? It's heavy, ain't it? Let's go back to Judith. <laughs> this is where our power is. This is what I'm talking about. We run around here talking about, whoa, whoa, was me. You don't know. You, you don't understand the power that we have. Read that. Judith, chapter 5 and verse 18. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore. That's what happened to us in Deuteronomy 28 chapter and Luke, what we was reading earlier. Read. And were led captives into a land that was not theirs. Mm. Is that not talking about us? Come on. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground. That's, that's when the Babylonians, that ain't talking about with Rome now. That's talking about when the Babylonians took us down. When the Babylonians, when you read in Psalms, uh, 137, exactly. Come on. And their cities were taken. So this is when we was coming out of Persia. 
and we, their s- cities were taken by the enemies. But now, are they returned to their God? This is now are they returned to their God? This is when Cyrus gave us the ability to go and rebuild in Jerusalem. That's what this is talking about here. Read on when you read the book of Ezra, E Z R A, the first chapter. Read, and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now it, it was desolate because of what the Babylonians did. And you had the Edomites that was on the other side, the so-called white man that was on the other side, cheering our destruction. Go ahead. Now, therefore... So my- this guy ran off this whole history to this king. He said, now I done told you all that history, all what we talked about with Pharaoh, all of that was given to this king. Y'all all right? Read. Now, therefore, my lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God... So what is the objective of our enemies? To get us to commit sin. That's what we're reading here. Read that again. Now, therefore, my lord and governor... If there be any error in this people. This is being said to the same man that was asking, who are those people and what is the number of their army and all that? So he's telling them how you can defeat them. If our people are breaking the laws of God, you can overthrow them. That's what he's telling them. Read that again. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor. The same man that was in the third verse. If there be any error in this people. If there be any error in this people. And they sin against their God. And they sin against their God because this is the God that hates iniquity. We read that earlier. Go ahead. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Mm, 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 mm. Let's swallow that. Let's let that butter get in the corn rolls and get all up in that head. Read that again. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people. If there be any sin in the nation of Israel. Go ahead. And they sin against their God. And they sin against their God. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Let us consider. You know what it means to consider? To sit down and think of ways to cause our people to sin. Pay them on Friday night so they can buy and sell. Send up Christmas carols and all that garbage so that our people get in the Christmas spirit. Sin. Easter bunnies. Rabbits don't lay eggs. I don't care. I'm still celebrating Easter. You follow me? That's what, that's what we're talking about. That's how they considered. They thought of ways, creative, crafty ways to get us to sin more and more. Weekend sale is for the kids. Y'all all right? Read that again. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. And if we put these traps in place the right way, this shall be their We will rule over them forever. We will exploit them forever. We can have our prisons built up and we can gu- we guarantee to have black flesh in it to keep the stocks pumped. That's considering. Y'all all right? Go ahead. Let us consider, because if we keep them in sin, we got it made. We got them. And we're trying to find out where our power is. Read. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. And if so we got them in sin, we could go and take them over. That's what happened with Achan. Achan started sinning. Well, Achan picked up that Babylonian garment. Sin was in the body of the armies of Israel. Israel started dying. Because the God that hates iniquity was against us. Y'all all right? Read. Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity. Hold it. This is where our power is. But if there be no sin. Go ahead. In their nation. In their nation. Let my Lord now pass by. Le- l- listen, man. <laughs> Leave them the hell alone. That's the message. If there be no sin among them, your behind better leave them alone. Go ahead. 
Least their God defend them. Unless you piss their God off and he'll do you like he did Pharaoh. Go ahead. And their God before them. And their God before them instead of against them. Come on. And we become a reproach before all the world. And we look like a doggone fool. The Lord destroy us like he did the Egyptians. Got them sitting on the ground. <laughs> Making dirt diapers. They got, they, they got nothing. I'm talking about the real ones now. Huh? That's what he's going to do to everybody. That's what he's going to do when you read Romans 9. Okay? So that's a beautiful thing. So um, so that was it, right? That yes, was sir. it on that. All right. Yes, so what I'm going to do, because I think the bishop going to be on. Let me just see if he's on yet. He's a, well, I'm going to go on a little further. Huh? Okay. So with this understanding... Somebody had asked me a question a while back, and he said, Deacon, this was a while back, he said, how do you maintain faith in this walk? Now, I've been in this truth for a number of years, so somebody asked me, he said, how all these years you, you stayed faithful, you know, how do you stay in this truth? Because there's so many temptations, y'all know what I'm talking about, so many temptations, yeah, that was a question that was asked to me, uh, you know, temptations, trials, many trials have come my way. Different things have come my way. How do, you, how do you make it through all of that and still be in this truth? That's a, that was a question. I had to think about it. Hence, believers and non-believers, right? There's two things that I gave the answer in terms of how I answered that question. Number one is fear. I'm afraid to be on the wrong side of the most high. I'm afraid to be on the wrong side of God. Let's read that. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, no, Psalms, Psalms 1, 11, and 10, I think it is. Psalms 1, 11, and 10. Psalms 1, 11, and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's the thing. I fear him. I fear the Lord. I fear that if I commit sin, I'm afraid he might see it. And then I know there's judgment coming. You follow me? So I'm trying to stay as best as I can, stay away from sin. Because I know that God hates iniquity. I know that he hates sin. So I have to do my best to stay away from that thing. I like there's a campaign that Deacon Laba has. The no sinning campaign. I like that brother. I love Lava. It's a little short self. <laughs> but I love Lava. Lava has a um has a campaign, stop sinning. And what's it what's ingenuit, what's ingenious about that is because it was a, it became a catchphrase in Israel. When I say a catchphrase, it's something that you could put on a shirt. Something that you can sing about, make a song about, put a video out. And it has the reverberating uh, benefit of reminding you to stay in the laws of the Most High. Y'all all right? So that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. And um, I'm happy for that thing, you know. So that was one of, my, uh, one of the answers that I use to keep me on track because I'm afraid of the judgment that comes from disobeying God's commandments. The other one is, after reading all of the history and the, and the bloodshed that we've written, give me Psalm 79. This is the other one. Psalm 79. Psalms 79. Psalms chapter 7. Here's the other one. And then I want Psalms. I want two things in Psalms. Y'all, This last one, y'all ain't going to like it. Y'all going to get squeamish. I know you're going to get squeamish. But I'm going to read this one. Uh, I'm going to look for the other one, too. Psalms, what did I ask for? Psalm 79. Yes, read Psalm 79. Hold that. But I'm looking for something else. Um, I got it. This is going to be good. Read Psalm 79, verse 1. Psalms chapter 79 and verse 1. O oh God, that he then are come unto thine inheritance. So, number one, my first thing was I don't want to be caught on the wrong side of the Lord. So that fear is what mo motivates me to keep God's commandments. Y'all all right? So here's the other one. Read. Read that again. 
O God, the heathen are come unto thine inheritance. The heathen, meaning the nations, are come into our inheritance. What are we reading about? This is the time period when, Jer when Jerusalem was overthrown by Rome. That's what this is David. This is uh, the Psalm of Asaph, which was one of David's musicians. He wrote this in terms of a prophecy that was going to come to pass about Israel. Okay, so the Most High showed Asaph the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD that we, that we just got through reading about in, in uh, Luke. Y'all all right? That Jerusalem shall be overthrown by the Gentiles and all that, and it shall fall by the edge of the sword. Y'all with me? That's what that's talking about. So we hear. Read. Read that again. O oh God, that heathen are come unto thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have led Jerusalem on heaps. This, now, this happened twice. This happened, of course, with Babylon when Babylon did it. Like we were talking about earlier. That's what Psalms 137, 9, 7 to 9 is about. Okay, let's read that. Let's jump there. Psalms 137. So this was written in regards to what happened in, in Babylon and in Rome. Both of these uh, time periods. Yes. Uh, where we at? You want to Psalms 137? 137 verse 7 and 9. Psalms 137 verse 7. Psalms 137 and verse 7. Keep in mind, I'm giving you what caused me to be a believer rather than a non-believer. That's why I'm answering this question. Read. Remember, O, God, o Lord, the children of Edom. Hold it. The prophet, who's, who wrote this? David? Hold it. Let me see. What it says at the top of the chapter. It says Asaph again or David? Uh... Psalm of, says Psalm of David here, 138. Hold on a second. It's all David. David is writing all of this from 132 all the way down. Okay, read. Psalms 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Remember. So David is saying, look, Lord. I don't want you to forget the children of Edom. Y'all all right? Read. In the day of Jerusalem. In the day of Jerusalem. In the day of Jerusalem, meaning in the time that Jerusalem was being overthrown by the Babylonians. Go ahead. Who said. This is what the Babylonians said. Raise it. Raise it. Even to the foundation thereof. Okay, hold it. I made a mistake. It wasn't Babylon that said it. Edom said this when, when Babylon was destroying us. They were cheering them on. While Babylon was tearing and destroying us, Esau was on the other side saying, yeah, kill him. Destroy him. That's what race it means, R-A-S-E. Mean destroy it, destroy it. Even to the ground. Even to the foundation thereof. That's what's being said there. Y'all all right? I want vengeance for this thing. That's the reason why I'm, that's my other part. Fear on one side, and I want vengeance on the other side. Y'all all right? Read that again. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Raise it even to the ground, to the foundation thereof. Destroy the Israelites. Read. O oh, daughter of Babylon. Wait a minute. The most high is calling old calling Edom the daughter of Babylon. Not actual Babylon, but the daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon meaning the, meaning the so-called white man. That's what it's talking about. The daughter of Babylon. Because why? Because Esau follows the ways of Babylon. Okay? Where do you think Christmas came from? Babylon. Where do you think this Easter, Ishtar, is about Babylon. All of these wicked holidays all go back to Babylon with Semiramis, with this Christmas garbage. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Read. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. Who ought to be destroyed. When they're going to be destroyed? When 144,000 and the one-third wake up. That's what we read earlier. Y'all all right? Read on. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee 
as thou hast served us. The Lord said, happy shall we be. I want to be happy. Happy shall we be that rewardeth us, the reward of them as they have rewarded us. What do they reward us with? Slavery, castration, murder, huh? rape, all that. Okay? The most I ain't going to have us raping nobody, so I have to say that. I need to clear that up. Because somebody running around talking about something, we're going to get the rape. Rape is, against God, rape is against God's laws. The most I ain't going to have us raping anybody. The other nation's going to be doing the raping. Y'all all right? But we're going to be chopping their behinds up. That's going to be beautiful. That's in Psalms 149. That's like heaven to me. He said, we're gonna have, he, said, he said, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the nations. You hear that? And we're going to bind their chains. We're going to bind their collars in chains of iron. Bind their necks and their wrists and all that. They're going into slavery. That's the thing that motivates me. Y'all all right? I know this is, they might not like that thing. Some of y'all might like Esau. That's too bad. You're going to be crying on that day because he's behind getting locked up. Huh? But no. He's going to get it. Uh, read. <laughs> Verse 9. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Ooh. How bad could that be? The Lord said for us to reward them as they rewarded us. Don't you know that there's records, I should have bought some of them pictures, where they grabbed our little babies by their feet. Um, this mainly happened in Northern Kingdom when the conquistadors came in and destroyed Eph Ephraim and Simeon and Manasseh, Gad, Reuben. When they came over and destroyed them, these wicked conquistadors, uh, Christopher Columbus and his vicious cohorts, and Hernando Cortez, huh? These dudes. What's some of the other ones? Ponce de Leon, okay? These, these guys, these murderers, they went and they grabbed the little babies by their feet and swung them up against stones. Y'all got pictures on that? And, and slam their heads up against, look at De La Casas, put that up there. Uh, Bartholomew uh, De La Casas, uh, destruction, destruction of the Indies. Destruction of the West Indies. It's, it's, it's in that book. Wait a minute. No, I didn't bring it. I didn't bring it. While he's getting that, you know, but that's what this is saying. Read that again. Happy shall he be that take it. He's looking. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. So the Lord said, we're going to be happy. We ain't going to be crying. We're going to be happy. So when you bash them little, when you grab the little Edomite babies by their feet. That's what that's talking about. And their head's going to bust up against rocks. That's why it says against the stones. That's, that's justice. There it is right there. Zoom in on that one. That one right in the middle. That's it right there. Now, in this, this right here, which y'all see, well, you got the picture up above. What can we do? Can we zoom that in? Oh, it's taking a little bit. Y'all see the Edomite over there? Y'all see that tall thing standing up against them? You see that's one of our children in his hand, right? He's grabbing them by the feet, and look at the wall that he's going to slam the baby's head up against. Okay? God had that recorded way before they even did it. Okay? So these illustrate. this is not a comic book here. This is actual history. They didn't have photographs, so they drew it. The, these people that was back there that was, re, that was recording what they were doing made illustrations of what they actually saw. Okay? I got books that tells you how bloody the scene was. They're burning, they burning us up. They hung us in groups of 12 in remembrance of Christ and the apostles. That's was 13 of them there. And, they, and the, the, the horror, when you, I, I guess I got to bring that out the next time. Well, I'll save that because I know little, this is getting a little bit gory. Brothers and sisters like having a hard time with that thing. I understand that. Don't worry. We get that white Jesus out your mind before it's over with. Y'all will be all right. Y'all all right? <laughs> but y'all see the part there where the, where the conquistador got the baby? Okay. All right. Get that off. <laughs> Let's get back to the scripture before we run out. Um, where we at? 
Uh, we just finished up uh, Psalms right. 137. 7 and 9, right? So yes, it said, happy shall he be that taketh thy little ones, that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Now, let's go back to uh, Psalms 79. Psalm 79. I'm going to wrap it up. Psalms chapter 79. Then I'm oh. going to give you all a break before the bishop come on. You all all right with that? Yes, all right. I'm going to end it with this here. You want Psalm 79, 1. Psalms chapter 79 and verse 1. O oh God, the heathen are come unto thine inheritance. So the point that I was making was that the heathen, the nations, came into our inheritance twice. They came the first time with Babylon, and then they came again in Rome. When the Romans came in 70 AD, like we was reading in uh, Luke. Come on. Thy holy temple they have defiled. They defiled our temple twice. The abomination of desolation was actually talking about Rome. Go ahead. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. They have laid Jerusalem on heap. I'm giving you, the reason why I'm reading this, because I'm giving you the both sides of why I'm staying fervent in this truth. Because number one, I fear the judgment of the law for breaking God's laws. And two, I want vengeance. I want revenge. I want vengeance for what happened to my people, man. Read. The dead bodies of thy servants, they have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven. We suppose it like, what's his brother in uh, the apocrypha? What's his name? The brother that, that, that went blind, Tobit. Tobit. His job was to bury the Israelites. And he, went to, he, he was burying Israel against the order. This is a different time period. This was then turn the time of Assyria and Nineveh. He was burying Israelites. But I'm saying that we always buried our dead. That's my point. Here, they did not allow us to bury. Read that again. The dead bodies of thy servants. So when, I, when, the, when, the, when the nations came in, when Rome came in, when Babylon came in, they killed us like we was reading in Luke. They chopped us up with swords. They chopped up our women that, that was carrying little babies. They cut them up and left our bodies on the ground. Just left them there. That's what we're reading. Read that again. The bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven. The fowls of the heavens, meaning the buzzards came down and was picking off of our flesh. Picking off of our little babies. Picking off of our women, breasts and legs and stuff. From the ones when they just chopped them and just left them there. They left a coyote or whatever just come and drag a piece of us into the woods and eat us later. That's what this is saying. Read. The flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem. Do you know how much blood that was? They shed our bodies. They shed, that's why it said in Luke that they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And they said, and, they, and in those times it shall be grievous. That's why Deuteronomy is talking about that siege and that terribleness that happened to us there. Y'all all right? All this is talking about the same period. Go ahead. And there was none to bury them. That's crystal clear. They did not allow us to bury our, our bodies. So our bodies just laid out there, cut up, wounded, but couldn't move, and they just let us rot. Y'all all right? This is our history. Now, let's see how God is. Hold on now. Start with verse 17. Now, remember, they left our bodies for the fowls, for the beasts. And they would none to bury us, right? Let me show you that God has everything recorded. Y'all going to like this. Y'all all right? Let's see. Let's see all these things. that. Thou, give, me, give me that in Psalms first. Give me Psalms. <laughs> give me Psalms 50 and 21. Listen. Give me Psalms 50 and 21. Psalms. Psalms chapter 50, Psalms chapter 50 and verse 21. Let me see if that's it. Go ahead. These things hast thou done. That's it. These things hast thou done. This is the wicked, Esau, that thou hast done to my people. Go ahead. 
And I kept silent. And I kept silent. When you were destroying my people in Jerusalem, when you did put them on cracks and drugs into the neighborhood, did all kinds of evils to them, I kept quiet because my people disobeyed me. But that doesn't mean I don't love them. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to send a savior for them. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to redeem them from what you tried to kill them. Go ahead. Thou <laughs> thoughtest, thou thoughtest that I was altogether as and one as thyself. They thought that the Most High was on their side with their white Christ and all that garbage in church. They think that the Most High is on their side. Go ahead. Some of us think that the Most High is on their side. God the says, you know, you thought that's what it was, but that ain't the point. Go ahead. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. He said he's going to set the Israelites up in order in front of them. And that's why you men are being raised up. And our sisters are being raised up to be honorable. And all of the evil that they've done to try to destroy us, to see you come through all of that smoke and ash, to stand up like gold and diamonds. Huh? That's baffling the hell out of them. Don't think you ain't got his attention. And he said all of us are supposed to be dead on crack. Y'all all right? With broken homes and women that's been whored out and brothers that adulterated, adulterated out. <laughs> Y'all understand? They expect us to be destroyed, but to see the Most High is be bringing beauty out of ashes. That's what he's bringing with you brothers and sisters. Y'all all right? And to let you know that the Most High said, all these things that you've done, I kept silent. And you thought that I was with you. Let me show you that the Most High got him in a trick bag. Because that evil that he did to us in Jerusalem and left our bodies on the ground, the most I had to record it right here. Let's read it. Revelation chapter 19, verse 17. Come on, give it to him. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. <laughs> what kind of weapon can Esau come up with to deal with that? Oh, okay. I'm going to end it. Read. Finish it. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. So he told all of these birds to get together, to gather together, to do what? Gather yourselves together unto the supper of the supper. Of the great God. Of the great God. He getting ready to feed these animals. Read. That he may eat that that ye may eat the flesh of kings. That you birds might eat the flesh of kings. Go ahead. And the flesh of captains. And the flesh of captains. And the flesh of mighty men. And the flesh of mighty men. And the flesh of horses. And the flesh of horses. And of them that sit on them. And them in the power seat. Go ahead. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond. Both small and great. So all praise to the Most High. So them that did that to us, the Most High going to get vengeance on them by having the birds eat their flesh like they sent the birds to eat our flesh. All praise to the Most High. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries 
where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.